Alright guys, my name is Meta Goblin, and today we're going to be counting down the most expensive items in the Burning Crusade Classic. Today's video will focus mainly on materials and crafted items rather than weapons and armor. These are items that you can farm and craft to make lots and lots of gold in TBC Classic. All of the main gold farming addicts out there are going to be posting each and every one of these items on the auction house. By the way guys, just before we jump in, I'd appreciate it if you quickly subscribe to the channel as that really helps out and quickly follow me on Instagram and Twitch, you will find all that in the description of the video. But anyway, let's jump in. So I'm going to tell you what the prices are for these items roughly basing it on a private server I play called Karazand, but I imagine that these items will be largely inflated if TBC Classic servers are continued from Classic WoW servers. So that's just something to bear in mind. But anyway, first of all, we have the Fell Lotus, which will roughly sell for 40 to 50 gold on this private server. It's very similarly obtained to the Swift Thistle, okay, in Classic WoW, because it has a small chance to drop when you do herbalism on any of the herbs out in the open world. This is essentially the Black Lotus of TBC Classic, however it's going to be a little bit cheaper because you can get it from any single herbalism node in the open world. And what it obviously means is people will not be able to totally camp this item with bots or anything like that, so that issue is largely resolved in TBC Classic. Now, it is required for every single one of the big alchemy flasks, like for instance the flask of pure death, which increases your shadow, frost and fire damage by 80 for 2 hours. Every single raider, will, or every serious raider, will probably purchase a flask like this at some point in their lives, which means essentially Fell Lightus is one of the biggest, highest demand items because probably about 75 to 90% of players will inadvertently obtain a Fell Lotus by obtaining one of these flasks. So yeah, extremely high demand. Next we have the Heart of Darkness, which sells roughly for 300 to 500 gold. Now this is a very, very low drop chance from the trash mobs in the Black Temple and for the Battle of Mount Hyjal. So if you're playing in a particular phase when these items just come out, they are going to be considerably more expensive than further down the line. Now these are required for 33 different crafted gear, including the Shadow Resistance gear, which is very essential for tanks to obtain on particular bosses in Black Temple. But apart from that, it is also used for some really good DPS gear. Thirdly, we have the Void Crystal, which are selling for 50 50 to 60 gold and these are obviously disenchanted from epic gear pieces so mainly raid gear but you can also take advantage of certain cheap epic gear that you can craft to disenchant with this now it's required for some of the best in slot enchants like the mongoose executioner sunfire and soul frost so they'll probably bump up in price when those enchants become available, when more and more people actually start obtaining that recipe, because they have a low drop chance from particular raids. Anyway, they're also needed for Shadow Resistance gear when Black Temple comes out, which means when that happens, the price will probably go up again, because there will be a slightly bigger demand for Void Crystals. For number four, we have Primal Might, which at the moment are selling for 120 gold. Now, one thing that increases the value of this item is, first of all, the one day cooldown. So this is not an item that you can just endlessly farm over and over again, because obviously if the item was more available, it would decrease its value. What the Primal Might is, it's a transmute that combines all of the Primals together into one Primal, apart from Primal Life and Primal Shadow. So it's already getting pretty expensive because the Primals themselves are very, very expensive too. And it's a reagent for 48 craftable gear pieces from leatherworking, tailoring and blacksmithing for some seriously good gear. But obviously the main reason why it costs so much is because you actually need so many Primals together to create it, which is a good segue into our number five item, which is raw primal items, particularly primal fire, water and air. Those are going to be the big daddy expensive ones. These are mainly found from elementals in the open world, so it can be very difficult to obtain these items because, you know, you've got bots and Chinese farmers probably dominating these areas when TBC Classic comes out. They have a very rare chance to drop from, well, when you do a little bit of mining and sometimes fishing, but mainly you will just have to kill elementals. 
And I would say the primals are probably the most used reagent in the entirety of TBC. I could be wrong about that. Tell me in the comment section because they're just used for so many different things. It's crafting gear. It's crafting other pieces of items on this list. Near enough, everything that's a little bit expensive will probably require at least one primal. For number six, we have the cloth cooldowns like spell cloth, shadow cloth, and primal moon cloth. Now, these can only be crafted on a three and a half day cooldown, which is what massively increases their value because you can't just farm it over and over again like we mentioned before. But if you do have a specialization in one of the cloth specializations, then you will yield two of the cloth from one cooldown. It only requires a very quick quest for you to be able to obtain that and then when you get bored of a particular specialization you can swap them around. Now these items are needed for your pre-raid best in slot loot which will last quite literally until tier 6 so we're talking spell strike, frozen shadow weave and spell fire and moon cloth gear. Now spell cloth and shadow cloth are definitely going to be much more expensive than the moon cloth because moon cloth only requires cheaper primals to actually craft in the first place. For number seven we have the living ruby which is prospected from adamantite ore or fell iron ore although it is an extremely low chance for it to be prospected from fell iron ore so and it's even pretty low when you're doing on adamantite ore to be honest it's only like four or five percent and you have also have an extremely low chance to get them when you do your mining. Weirdly, there's also a 6% chance to get one from Morose when you pickpocket him, who is a boss in Karazhan. Just a little bit of trivia there for you. So obviously, obtaining this item is a huge gamble, because if you go for this item, you have to buy 20 raw and might from the auction house for about 14 gold, and then per stack you have 4 chances to get a gem out of it. There's obviously other gems that you can obtain from prospecting ore, but Living Ruby is definitely the most expensive one, whereas the others can be actually really dirt cheap, unfortunately. The Living Ruby is needed to make the best gems, apart from the epic gems that you get later in Tier 6, so for a long time people are going to be using Living Rubies to craft some pretty decent gems. Mainly the strength and spell power gems, they're in the biggest demand because, you know, every single DPS needs them and is constantly upgrading their gear and therefore constantly having to keep buying gems. So it's a very high demand item, whereas the others, because they're not, you know, a certain other gems which are simply just not best in slot when it comes to stats, they are, uh, you know, have a much lower demand. For number eight, we have the Fell Armaments or the Arcane Tomes, which roughly sell for about 20 gold. These can be turned in for 350 rep with the Aldor or the Scryers, and it also gives you a cheeky little bit of rep with a Shatau, the 125 per turn, but it only works up until you are honoured with the Shatar. So essentially, it's a really big, chunky rep item. There's a low drop chance on demons, and slightly bigger drop chance on elite demons. You will mainly see them in dungeon runs like Shadow Labyrinth and things like that. And obviously, Aldor and Scry reputations are pretty essential for you to grind up, not just for the gear that you can get, but obviously because of the shoulder enchants. It's the only way you're going to get any kind of half-decent shoulder enchant unless you go for the effort of killing Saffron in Naxxramas. For number nine, we have Imbued Neverweave. So what you want to do to craft this is very simple. You craft Neverweave cloth with some arcane dust, and you make that Neverweave cloth that much more expensive. Now, this is used for many different crafts, like the spell cloth cooldowns that we mentioned earlier. But it's also used for imbued Neverweave bags that sell for 50 to 60 gold each. The imbued Neverweave itself will sell roughly for five to nine gold. Lastly, we have the rare leather items, which are the cobra scales, the cleft hoof leather, and I suppose you could put fell scales in there too, but the fell scales are a little bit cheaper than the cobra scales. Explain that in a second. So these are skinned from particular mobs in the open world and have a very low drop chance to actually drop. They're needed to craft some armor, but they're mainly used for the never cobra or the never cleft leg armor, which is the tanking or melee DPS leg enchant that can sell for well over 300 gold. But anyway guys, that is all the items that I'm going to talk about in this video. If you haven't already subscribed, please do double check, just in case you haven't been randomly unsubscribed from YouTube, because they do, you know, tend to do that from time to time, which is very useful. But anyway, my name is Medigobble, into my next video, ciao.